when I was a kid, I remember doing a research project for school. It was all about soda. You know, the one that you drink. I learned all about the history of soda, people who invented different kinds, and all the different ingredients that make all of those fun flavors. I then created a really cool presentation to share my findings at school and even made a giant soda can with sodas inside, real ones, to give to my friends. Think about a really cool project that you have done for school, something that you have researched about, taken a lot of time to learn and explore, and then you created an amazing project to share with others to help them learn more about it. In fact, there are people out there who do this for their job. They use their research about a topic to write and illustrate their findings so they can teach others about it. They also want to make sure that their findings and research are so exciting for you to learn as well. Who would do this for their job? Find out what STEM career I am describing in this episode of the STEM Career Quest. Have you ever found yourself asking this question, what do I want to be when I grow up? Maybe you already have an answer to that. Maybe you don't. Both are okay. Welcome to the STEM Career Quest podcast, a show made for kids like you to help you build your dreams or even find new ones in science, technology, engineering, and math. Each week, hear captivating stories and interviews to explore the exciting world of STEM. Oh, and grownups and teachers, you can listen too. We'll talk to experts in STEM who are passionate about what they do in the real world and how they make a positive impact in their careers. Created and hosted by K-5 STEM coach Naomi Meredith, this show will spark your imagination and passion. Join us each week on our quest to explore the possibilities of careers in STEM one episode at a time. The STEM career we are going to be hearing about today is what it is like being a nonfiction author and illustrator. In this career, they research and write books on different topics and create pictures that match the information to teach others about that topic. To tell us all about it, we will be meeting our special guest, Rachel Ignatowski. Rachel is a New York Times bestselling author and illustrator. Her work is so unique because she researches and does a lot of hands-on work to create books to help kids like you learn more about a variety of science topics. She is a great science communicator to learn from. Rachel gets to use her creativity, artwork, and writing every day to help you learn more about the world of science in exciting ways. So excited for you to get to know Rachel and this fun STEM career. Now, get ready for today's episode quest, my lovely questies. As you listen, find out the answers to these three questions. At the end of the episode, the answers will be revealed. Question number one is, what is Rachel's newest published book about? Question number two, true or false, Rachel's book, which will come out in September 2025, is all about dinosaurs. And question number three, what did Rachel get to crawl through when she went on a field trip as a kid? Be a careful listener. Now let's embark on this episode quest. Well, thank you, Rachel, so much for being here. We are so excited to talk with you today. If you wouldn't mind telling us, what is your STEM career and how would you describe what you do? Hi, I'm Rachel Gotowski. I am an author and illustrator of nonfiction books. So Nonfiction means books that are about real things. So I like to talk about how the world works, 
the science behind our world, but I also like to talk about why the world works the way it does. So, so sometimes I write books about history as well. And I am what you call a science communicator. So I take the information that scientists put out there and I turn it into fun, easy to learn. And I also do a lot of drawings to help with that. And if you guys get a chance to check out her books, we'll talk more about them. She is an amazing artist. So you definitely have to see the amazing work that she creates. So what would you say, Rachel, is the coolest part about your job? I would say the coolest part of my job would be when a new book comes out. And I actually have a new book right here based on what kids are learning about in elementary school. So this book is What's Inside a Bird's Nest, and it talks about the life cycles of birds. That is amazing. Did you study real birds to help inspire you for this book? Oh, of course. I read a lot of books that were super thick, but I also went on lots of hikes to go bird watching in my own neighborhood. So I went to a nature preserve by my house and I actually got to see a bunch of bluebirds build their nests and also teach their little juveniles kind of how to hunt after they've left their nest. And you actually get to, it really inspired the main character in my book right here, which is also a bluebird. Oh, so cute. I'm so excited to read that one. I love all of your other books. I'm so excited to read your newest one. (laughs) So along with that, um, do you have any other neat projects that you have worked on or something shocking or funny? Definitely a cool story. What would you like to share with us? Oh, well, you know, right now I'm writing a new book that doesn't come out until September 2025. So that's next year. And this book is all about dinosaurs and prehistoric life. So to research that book, I drove all the way out to Utah to actually dig for my own fossils in a shale quarry that was filled with trilobites. Now, trilobites, they're not bugs, but they look like little tiny pill bugs. And they're from way before the dinosaurs. They're they're from the Cambrian explosion. So these fossils... They were fossils when the dinosaurs were walking around. So that was a really cool experience. I always like to go on these little field trips to inspire my books. So you can't just spend your time alone in your studio drawing and writing. You have to go out and experience the world and talk to experts. So that's something that has always been a part of my science communication journey. How do you decide what you want your books to be about? You have a whole variety of them. How do you decide and pick which one you want to do? Well, I think about three different things. One, what are kids learning about in school? If it's on curriculum, it's probably going to be a good idea because I like to make books that can help teachers teach in their classrooms. The second thing is, does it solve a problem? Is there something that's happening in the world that kind of needs more explanation? And for me, I think scientific literacy, and that's just people's basic understanding of science, is something that we really have to make sure the general public knows. So um, whether it's your mom and dad or you learning it in school, it's important to teach people science. So that's a big problem to solve. And the third thing is, do I like it? If I am interested in it and I want to learn more, then I dedicate pretty much a year of my life to learning more about it and drawing pictures about it. And you have another book that's all about the history of the computer. And you did some really cool research for that. What did you have to do for that book? Oh, wow. Yes. The History of the Computer was one of my favorite books to create. So that is 25,000 years of human history, starting with the first cave people to create mathematical tools by drawing in the sand to keep track of how many sheep they owned, um, you know, how many people were being born. And it goes all the way through um, sort of technological history, through the Industrial Revolution, the, you know, the first computers built during World War II, the space race, all the video games that were invented in the 1970s and 80s, all that fun stuff. And to research that book, I actually created my own vintage computer collection. So I started collecting um, computers from the 1970s and 80s. So I actually own a Commodore PET and a Mac from 1984. Oh, wow. And I take them with me to schools and to conventions like 
Comic-Con and I load them up with video games for kids to play on. So it's really, really fun. I also collected a bunch of vintage robot toys. So I also have like Omnibot from 1984 as well. And we have fun remote controlling him and making him talk all the time. You make research sound so, like so much fun. <laughs> My favorite part of school was going on field trips. So I feel like as an adult, I just try to go on as many field trips as possible. It sounds like it. And you can still always learn. Your learning never ends, no matter how old you are. So with the field trips to getting into what you do, what experiences in your life led you to have this amazing career? How, what led you into this pathway? Wow. Okay. So when I was a kid, I live in California now, but I grew up in New Jersey, which means lots and lots of field trip to both New York City and Philadelphia. That's the tri-state area. I'm a Jersey yeah. girl. So visiting the Natural History Museum in New York and seeing the giant whale or yeah. going to the Franklin Science Center in Philadelphia and getting to crawl through the gigantic heart that they have there. Both of those experiences, um, I feel like I've been chasing the feelings of the joy I felt crawling through that heart my whole life. And I've just been wanting to share that excitement for learning in a hands-on way through my books. Cool. I love that. And is this like the um, first career that you had as an adult or did you do other things um, before getting into this whole publishing world? That's really interesting to ask. So I've always been drawing. Ever since I was a kid drawing, I, like my first memories were drawing on the walls and kind of getting a little yelled at because <laughs> I, I ruined the walls. Um, so I went to art school for college at Tyler School of Art in Philadelphia. And my very first job right out of college was actually making greeting cards for Hallmark. So I would draw little cakes and flowers and draw happy birthday and script. But on the side, I began freelancing and doing the kind of art that I really wanted to make, which was art about topics I thought were interesting. Parties are fun, but I like talking about science. So I started creating all these gooey and gross illustrations about human anatomy, very much inspired by the heart that I crawled through as a kid. And I started um, making all of that, freelancing with um, cancer research foundations and medical journals and really quickly started my career as a science communicator just because I love learning. Three things about birds you may not already know. During a bird's life cycle, it starts off as an egg. Once the baby is ready to come out of its egg, it pecks its way out as a hatchling. Soon its feathers will get fluffy and stronger from eating and develops as a chick. Once the chick grows up, it's an adult bird, and the life cycle starts all over again. The smallest bird egg belongs to the hummingbird. Those are my favorite kinds of birds. The largest bird egg belongs to the ostrich. Even though all birds have wings, they don't all fly. There are a lot of birds that don't spread their wings in the air, including penguins, emus, and kiwi birds. Did you know these three things about birds? Pretty cool, right? Loving the STEM Career Quest podcast and want more? Join the STEM Career Quest Club, perfect for teachers, homeschool parents, or families looking to add more educational opportunities during school breaks. Inside, you get access to a private community of other STEM Career Quest listeners, comprehension guides for each episode, teaching slides for each episode where it is broken up into chunks so you can listen in smaller segments, related STEM activities you can complete with simple materials, one monthly virtual STEM field trip, and more. Join the club at stemcareerquestpodcast.com slash club. I love that, how you use your skills and your passions to make it all work together and then inspire kids like who are listening to this podcast to learn more about the world and science. That is so amazing. And I feel like it's also really needed. People want mm -hmm. to learn about science. They just 
a lot of times they don't know how to communicate it. Yeah. So by putting a little smiley face on something, by making it a cartoon, all of a sudden you could trick people into learning. And I was actually able to quit my job at the card factory at Hallmark um, pretty quickly to just dedicate myself to science communication. That's awesome. I love how you're doing that work. And um, you have, I'm sure you have so many other books and ideas that you want to create after you're finished with your dinosaur book. I'm sure you're like, oh, okay, what's the next journey? So I love that so much. I'm not allowed to say what's next. So <laughs> right now, the only sneak peek you guys get is the dinosaur book I'm working mm -hmm. on right now. But everything else is hush hush until we get closer to the date of publication. <laughs> we love a good secret. We will all keep our eye out. <laughs> <laughs> so for kids who are thinking, wow, I love doing the same kind of work or science is interesting to me, or I love to draw too. What advice do you have for kids who might want to do something similar to you? I think, especially when you're a kid, draw, 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 draw every day. If you have a story you want to tell, write in your journal or just practice writing. It really doesn't have to be about anything. Just write a little bit every day. Um, also, don't feel too stressed out. I've been talking to kids around the country, and a lot of them feel really stressed out about making their artwork look perfect. The thing is, is that when it comes to art, being not perfect will actually be your strength. So draw, make mistakes, have fun, use different materials, draw different topics, and also take some classes. Taking classes in what you're interested in is really, really fun. So I suggest to do that as well. This is wonderful advice. I love that so much. And I need to take your advice too to practice my drawing skills. <laughs> I always say art is like sports. You have to work out and you have to practice. And even though it's really fun to do, sometimes it feels really hard. And uh, you have to work out even if you're not feeling like it all the time. So practice, practice, practice. That is excellent advice. And thank you so much, Rachel, for inspiring us and telling us all about your all the amazing work that you do. Thank you guys so much. And please check out What's Inside a Bird's Nest. It just came out a couple months ago. So um, if you like birds and you like learning about nature and life cycle science, Come check it out. <laughs> it is awesome, you guys. Definitely look at it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hope you've been listening carefully to today's episode. Now let's reveal the answers to today's episode quest. Question number one was, what is Rachel's newest published book about? The book is titled Inside a Bird's Nest, and it's about the life cycles of birds. Question number two was, true or false? Rachel's book, her next one, which will come out in September 2025, is all about dinosaurs. True. Rachel has been doing some cool research for this book including digging up her very own fossils in the wild. And question number three was, what did Rachel get to crawl through when she went on a field trip as a kid? A gigantic heart at the Franklin Science Center in Philadelphia. I also wanted to give a special shout out to our newest questies who are inside of our STEM Career Quest Club. Let's give a warm welcome to Mallory M, Megan C, Allison B, and Jessica M. They have access to all of the questions from our episode quest, along with some fun comprehension guides that go with each episode, paired STEM activities, and more. Make sure to check out the link in the show notes so you can also become a questie and get a shout out in the next episode. Loving the STEM Career Quest podcast? Want to be featured on the show? Leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and tell us what you love about it. 
Maybe you'll be featured on our next episode. What is something new that you learned today about being a nonfiction author and illustrator? Is this a type of STEM career that you might want to explore more? Even if it isn't, it's always great to learn new things from new people and discover more about the world around us. Also, I have a quick announcement for you. To help you dive in deeper with each episode and all of the extra content we have going on with our YouTube videos of the episodes and the listening comprehension guides and paired STEM activities inside the STEM Career Quest Club, and along with our social media, we are going to be releasing episodes every other week. This will give you time to soak up all of this new information. We're not going anywhere. We are just getting started, but wanted to make sure you know what is happening just so that you can become the very best questie that I know that you are. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the STEM Career Quest podcast. Grab your free episode badge, connect with today's guests, follow us on social media, join the club, and more. Find it all on our website at stemcareerquestpodcast.com.